this is my the Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with my October wrap-up for 2021. I read a total of 15 books this month. I will be splitting this up into two parts, so these are the first couple of books that I read, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Defy the Night by Bridget Kremer, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I definitely started out the reading month very, very well. This follows the Kingdom of Candela, which is separated into multiple sectors, and it has been on the brink of collapse for many years now due to a virus that has been spreading. King Harrison was appointed after the assassination of his parents, which left Prince Coric to step into the position of King's Justice. As the years pass, the two brothers have gained a reputation of being quite ruthless when it comes to the punishments that they bestow on their people when crimes are committed. When people begin to think that the elixirs that are made from moonflower petals, which are only found in certain sectors, are starting to become ineffective, there are rumors about a rebellion on the rise. Tessa Cade is an apothecary apprentice who, with the help of her masked best friend Wes, take it upon themselves to deliver medicine to those who cannot afford it. When a sudden tragedy occurs, Tessa does the unthinkable and breaks into the palace in the hopes of finding more elixir that she can distribute to the people. She ends up finding more secrets than she bargained for and she quickly realizes that things aren't what they appear in the kingdom of Candala and it's like the story of that. This is actually my first Bridget Kremer book. I know that a lot of people's first is The Curse of So Dark and Lonely, but I actually have not read that book. But I have heard really great things about her writing, and I definitely fell in love with it in this book. I believe that this is supposed to be a retelling of Robin Hood, which I'm not 100% sure if that is actually accurate, but there are a lot of similarities to that story in this one, so I'm just assuming it is. Although it was a bit predictable at time, I was instantly drawn into this plot and these characters, I fell in love with them and I just couldn't get enough. I actually read this in one day because I was just so invested in this story. I found it to be so action-packed and thrilling. I could not stop turning the pages. There were also some twists and turns that I actually did not see coming, so I felt that it was a pretty good balance between the predictability and the twists and turns that were unexpected. I also think that the court politics in this was really intriguing. There was a crumbling dynamic between the kingdom and the council members. I think that the characters are definitely what shone for me in this book. I felt that a lot of them were very complex and just really fun to get to know. Tessa and Wes were a lot of fun. I really liked their relationship together and their vigilante dynamic. I really liked how they both wore masks during the time that they were together so they never really knew each other's identities in case they were captured. I just think that that added a fun element to their relationship. I think that Tessa was such a fierce character. She never stood down and always said what was on her mind, which I really liked. I also am a huge fan of the morally gray Prince Coric. Even with his scary reputation, I just fell for this man. I loved getting to know him as the story progressed. I really enjoyed learning his backstory and how he got the reputation that he did. I loved the complex relationships in this and how all the characters needed to learn to trust each other again after the sense of betrayal that they felt. I also think that the side characters were a lot of fun, especially Quint, the palace master. His relationship with Coric was so much fun to read about. I absolutely adored them. I am so happy that this is going to be a series because, like I said, I love this book. I fell in love with these characters and this world and I am so excited to get to dive back into it when the next book is released. So I give this a 5 out of 5 star. I definitely recommend it. It was a grand old time. Next up, I have Iron Widow. This is by Zran J. Zo, and I gave this 5 out of 5 as well. Like I said, my reading month started off with a bang. So this follows the Huxia who are tasked with protecting the Great Wall from the Hundens. They have created large mechs that they call chrysalises that they use to battle the opposing mechs from the Hundens. These battles are broadcasted for the people to enjoy and be entertained and it always takes two 
people to pilot these mechs, one male and one female. The male is usually the stronger of this partnership and it usually ends up having the female be sacrificed during the battle. So after the death of her sister, Zetian has made it her life goal and mission to become one of these concubine pilots and take down the man who killed her sister and it's like the story of that. So this story was pitched as the handyman's tale meets Pacific Rim in a polyamorous reimagining of China's only female empress. I do not know the story of any of those, but I was so here for this story. The Chinese history woven into this sci-fi world was so thrilling and action-packed. I found the idea of Qi, which was the individual's spirit level, which powered the chrysalises, to be so intriguing, and I just wanted to know more about it as I continued reading. The story itself was also just so action-packed and thrilling. I could not put it down. I became so invested in these characters and their relationship with one another. The three characters that ended up being in a relationship with one another just played off of each other so well. They truly rounded each other out. I think Zetian was definitely my favorite. She was just so fierce and definitely deserved the nickname of Iron Widow. I am definitely going to be picking up the second book in this, I think it's a duology, but definitely going to be reading that because that epilogue threw me for a loop and I am so intrigued to see where the story goes from here. So five out of five stars, definitely recommend if you haven't read it already, which I'm pretty sure like everybody has read it at this point, but is real good. The next book I'm going to talk about is Take Me With You When You Go. This is by David Levithan and Jennifer Niven. This follows Ezra Ahern who wakes up one day to find his older sister missing from their home, leaving him behind with an abusive stepfather and neglectful mother. He finds an email address in a spot where only he would find and so he writes this email address and his sister answers and when she writes back, he wants answers. This was a lot more hard-hitting than I thought it was going to be. It is told all through emails between the siblings and they both have a lot of trauma to get through and unpack. I found B to be very selfish and just extremely unlikable. She does have a lot of character development as the story progresses, and she becomes a little better, but I was not a fan of this girl. I do think that both siblings had a lot of great character development as the story progressed. I think that Ezra became a lot stronger and was able to stand up for himself. I also liked how we did get some emails from other characters. I think that that helped push the story along because I feel like if it was just these siblings, it would be a lot to deal with because of all the trauma that they have. Overall, I do think that this was a unique way to tell the story, but just make sure you are in the correct mindset because because like I said, it's a lot of trauma and a lot to unpack very quickly in a very short amount of time because it is a very short book. So 3.5 out of 5 stars, it was what it was. The next book I have is The Other Passenger by Louise Candalish. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Jamie Buxby who takes the commuter ferry every morning with his much younger friend Kit. One evening after a night of drinking, Kit and Jamie end up getting into a big fight and when Kit fails to show up on the docks the next morning, Jamie doesn't really think anything of it until he is interrogated by the police who say that Jamie was the last one to see Kit before he disappeared the previous night and it's like the story of that. The book is told in Jamie's point of view with alternating timelines between 2019 and 2020. It was interesting to see the relationship between Kit and his partner Mila as well as Jamie and his wife Claire kind of form and develop and then ultimately change in the end as the year progresses. I will say that the story was a bit slow in the beginning and it did take me a while to become invested in this story and these characters. I would not say that any of these characters were likable in the slightest and Jamie is a very unreliable narrator so I did enjoy that part. The story is pretty predictable but there are a couple twists and turns that I did not see coming so overall it was fun while it lasted and I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is the new spin-off series of the Caraval trilogy which I 
loved and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Evangeline Fox who is desperate to stop the wedding of her beloved and her stepsister. So she ends up making a deal with the Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks that Evangeline give three kisses to the people of his choosing at the time of his choosing. But things get complicated very quickly and Evangeline finds herself in a position that she did not exactly bargain for. Like I said, I am a big fan of the Carvel trilogy. I just found it so addictive, so I'm not really surprised that I really enjoyed this. I ended up finishing this in under 24 hours because I was just so invested in these characters and this story. I was a huge fan of Jax in Carvel, so I was very excited that we were getting a whole story all about him. I will say that this is definitely not his story. We're following more of Angeline than anybody else, but I mean, he is still mischievous. He is still so much fun to read about, so I'll take it. It was kind of weird not to see him with Donatella, but I still liked the development of his relationship with Evangeline as the story progressed. It was interesting to see a more vulnerable side of Jax, although I do wish that we had gotten like a point of view or something from him. I do think that Evangeline was a fun character, although at times she was so naive, it was kind of annoying. She definitely did grow on me as the story progressed, because in the beginning I was not a fan, but we learned to love her. I do think that the story took some twists and turns that I had not expected. Like, there's random vampires in here, which I was just like, what is happening? But like, I was here for it at the same time. I enjoyed the cameos we got of old characters such as Tella and Scarlet, and I also just fell in love with these new characters, so I am very intrigued to see where the story progresses, and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next three books that I'm going to talk about are actually all picture books. I was sent for review because I am a before and after school program lead, so I have a kindergarten classroom that I am in charge of, so I asked a bunch of publishers to send me some books because we are lacking in the book department. They ended up sending me three books, one physical and two ebooks. So I did end up reading all three to my kids and I thought I would tell y'all about them and what they thought of them because who doesn't love to hear kindergarten reviews of books? The first book I have is A Hold Your Hand. This is by Maggie C. Rudd. This is a story all about the relationship and bond that parents have with their children. I ended up rating this a four out of five stars based off of my kids' reactions. They really liked the bright pictures. I will show you some. And I really liked this book because it has a lot of diversity in the pictures. I think that a lot of kids in my program don't necessarily see themselves represented in picture books often. So I was just really excited to be able to read them a book where they could see themselves physically on page. So I end up giving this a four out of five stars. It's really cute. Definitely recommend this one. The next two were ebooks that I just read on like the iPad to them, but they got to look at the pictures and they really enjoyed it. The first one is How to Hug a Pufferfish by L. Peterson. This one is a really, really sweet story all about teaching the kids about consent, body autonomy, and asking before you touch another person. And I really love this one. I gave this one a five out of five stars. I just think that it was a really cute way to get that lesson across in a very understandable way. This is another one where the colors were very bright, very eye-catching, kept the kids' attention all throughout the story, so definitely recommend this one as well. Five out of five stars. And then the last book that I received was called Bugs, What Do Ants, Bees, and Dragonflies Get Up To All Day? And this is by Dr. Jessica Ware. This one I ended up giving a 3.5 out of five stars. The children's interest has been bugs lately. So this is a non-fiction book that gives bug facts throughout a 24 hour period of the day. And it just kind of talks about what these different bugs get up to during their day. The kids really liked the bright pictures. They liked that the background is very, very dark. So the bugs that kind of pop out because they are so bright on page. By the end of reading this about 60,000 times, the kids were actually able to spit bug facts back at me, which was really fun. But yeah, I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is informational. It is fun and engaging. So a good time. Alright everybody, so that was part one of my October wrap up for 2021. Stay tuned for part two coming at you soon. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!